welcome, welcome to Health Issues 2010. We're truly excited that you're here with us, and, and believe me, we have a show today that I think that is um, it's different, but it's so important. This show today, we're dealing with HIV AIDS. Now, we have a guest for you today, and that's truly no stranger to the city of New Orleans and particularly all around the country, and that is one none other than Dr. Kevin Stevens. He is a physician. He's a lawyer. Uh, he's a, a pianist, a, a, a reverend, uh, but truly the director of the city of New Orleans Health Department, and we're truly honored to have today Dr. Kevin Stevens. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're truly excited to have you and, and appreciate Appreciate you, but we're dealing with a powerful subject today, and that's HIV/AIDS, um, an epidemic, um, uh, something that we're call out the fire engines, call out everything. What can we do? I mean, this is just taking over. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, especially in our African American females. I mean, it's ever increasing in terms of the number of new cases in African American females. And the interesting thing here is that they are uh, acquiring this disease through heterose heterosexual contact. It's not injection drug use. It's not female to female. It's actually male to female transmission. Well, that's so amazing, you know, because normally when people think about HIV AIDS, the first thing that comes to mind is purely just uh, homosexual transmission, gay disease. But you're saying heterosexual disease that's, that's affecting females. And you know, that, that's part of the problem. That's part of the reason we really need to scream and yell and get out there and tell our young women that it's not just uh, men having sex with men. Right. In fact, uh, you know, in the community we know that a, that a lot of men, like we call them DLs and down low, whatever you're going to call it, right. but right. bottom line is right. these are men who have sex with men. They also have sex with women also. And then we think that that's part of the reason for the transmission to our females. Okay. And then when you don't suspect it and you don't get tested it, right. you become positive, and then it's really, really problematic for everyone that when you have a female or anyone that becomes HIV infected. Right. So the females, they don't know that the their partner, the male, is infected, and uh, yeah, it, you know. It, it, it's, a, it's very interesting. You know, you can't really tell. I mean, you can't look at a male and tell if that male has sex with another male. I mean, it's very hard. I mean, you just can't do it. I mean, right. it's hard to tell. Right. And then you can't look at a person and tell that they are HIV infected. Until it's very late in the disease process. In fact, most people, you can have up to 10 years to be infected and not even have any symptoms at all. Right. So you may not know for a long period of time. So you can't look at people and just, you can't tell a book by its cover. Okay. I mean, you really have right. to look inside. So, so I think that we need to make sure a, you do get tested, and B, you get your partners tested because we can test and we can detect. So, it's it, it, we can detect ninety nine point nine percent of HIV cases. Right. People just if they can just get tested and just make sure that their partners tested. Right. That's the key. Now you know I, while you mentioned the getting tested, though one of the things that we know is that if you got infected today. Right. With HIV virus, uh -huh. then it can take up to six months before we can detect it. So we also are recommending that you not just get tested once, that you get tested in a six months time period also, because then that single test, it, it can take up to six months for you to be convert to serial conversion positive. So if somebody has sex uh, one day, say in January or whatever, that it won't show up until June or July. It may not show up. It, it will certainly won't show up in January. I mean, okay. if you get infected in January, right. it takes time. Because the way the virus works, it's a virus. And the virus gets in your blood cells, and it goes inside your cell, and then right. it goes into T lymphocytes and so forth, and it replicates, and it, it takes time for it to, uh -huh. to actually to get to do the damage that it does. Okay. And so it, it takes time for us to be able to detect it also. And it takes about six months, up to six months for us to be able to detect to test positive for you. Now, during that six-month period, can they transmit the disease? You can be. It, it certainly can be. I mean, because okay. once you have it, then yeah. you can be trans. Now, we do know, we do know that uh, the viral load is proportional to the transmission. So, okay. for instance, if you have very low viral loads early in the disease, right. that it's your transmission rates are less okay. than if you're late in end-stage disease and you right. have high viral loads. Okay. And we know that even in pregnancy. So one of the things that we do when women are pregnant is that we treat them so that they can have lower viral loads. Right. And so with that, it's less likely to be transmitted to the infant while they're pregnant. While they're pre okay. Right. So while you, if you're 
early and you don't know it and you test the negative and so forth, you right. can transmit it, but the rate of transmission is very low. But you still should use proper protective measures, you know. It should, at these days, I, I would not suggest anyone taking any undue, unnecessary risk. No sense taking risks because this is a preventable disease. It is detectable and it's preventable. And so we, the technology is there, the resources are there, and I think we just need to educate everyone because a lot of times people don't realize how at risk they are. They think that you can look at someone, they think that, oh, certainly, I mean, this person is that and that and the other, okay. and right. you can't really tell. I mean, we okay. know that uh, in our community, a lot of men are having sex with men. We know that a lot of men are having sex with women, too. Mm -hmm. and, and how do we know it? We see the infection rates rising, so it right. has to be. Right. Right. So it's right. not, I don't have a camera, you know, right. looking and people <laughs> right, see what right. they're doing. I just need to look at the rates, and you can tell. Right. Tell what's going on. You can tell the tree by its fruit. <laughs> okay, right. Now, now, and so many don't know. They don't know that they're infected. Right. We know that, uh, and then a recent CDC study came out that okay. said that we have grossly underestimated the number of HIV positive people we have in this country. Okay. And then we think that 25% of people who are infected don't know it, are asymptomatic and okay. undiagnosed. Okay. And so that's very high. In fact, in some areas of this country, we think that 5% of the population is even, uh, Af of the African American population, I need to say, is right. infected because. Uh, it's disproportionate between African American and Caucasian, so that we find that a higher percentage of African Americans are infected as, as opposed to Caucasian. And I'm not sure why and how that has happened, but that's that's just what the data shows. That's what's going on right now. So, but what happens is is um, it seems as though now this the rate is increasing as opposed to decreasing as far as for new infections. Yes, is the rate, more particularly in African American females the number of women who are becoming infected is increasing steadily. And so that's the thing that we want to get the law out. And it's through heterosexual contact. And so that's just so important that our African-American women remember and understand that that that's what's going on. And they need okay. to take the proper adjustment in their own lifestyle so that make sure they don't get infected. And if you are infected, make sure you get detected and so you can get treated. Because right. then if you get pregnant, you can transmit it to the child. Okay. And that's we, that's even more problematic because we don't want to, uh, you know, having a child HIV infected right. from birth can be very problematic. Well, wow. now what happens though is that we're looking at this disease, and we're looking at the you know the prevalence and increasing within uh, you know uh, African American females particularly. But there's some alarms that are going out even more where uh, the estimates have had to be reset or increased lately uh, from the CDC. Yeah, yeah, and no doubt that they uh, that the number of people who are infected, as we mentioned a little earlier, is that it's much greater than what we even thought, and okay. so this is a bigger problem. And you know, the problem, and that's why we need to get the word out. Right. Get tested. Get tested. Get tested. Get tested. Because yeah. if you get tested, then we can detect it, and then that's okay. why we're asking our ministers, we're asking our faith-based organization, okay. uh, the community-based organizations. Right. We're asking, especially kids and youth and people from the ages of 15 to 30, but even people over 50, uh, we have seen a, a significant uh, prevalence of HIV infections in people over the age of 50. Over the age of 50, when people would figure that they're, hey, they're, they're too old, there's no way that they'll get the disease and it's that's still right. occurring. So that's why we suggest suggesting that everyone get tested. I mean, okay. they, they, and it's, it's a simple test and it's fairly quick. Okay. And then you can, you can determine your status and then that way you know. And then right. once you get tested and you're tested negative, okay. then and remember, remember, especially even high risk, you just should get tested six months later. Later. Okay. And then secondly, you need to make sure you take proper personal precautions right. and practice good habits. Well, let's deal with that issue. You know, that's, <laughs> right. let's, okay, let's, let's jump right into it. Right. Let's, go, hey, let's, let's jump right into it because, that, <laughs> hey, that becomes the, the huge controversy out here. You know, the Bush administration particularly is speaking of, is pushing abstinence and uh, uh, many other groups are saying that, uh, hey, that's crazy. Why would we even talk about abstinence? And some groups are saying, um, hey, you know, why even talk about condoms and so right. forth? But uh, what's, wh where are we at? What's, what's the deal? Well, I think no doubt, no doubt. Um, I think we need to take this in terms of relationships. Okay. And I, in sex and relationships, I think we need to start thinking about relationship, love and longevity, and then the support and the care and those okay. type of things. And more particularly in our youth. I mean, a lot of times uh, from TV and movies and music and so forth, right. I think you take the love and the relationship out of the context right. of your interaction with the human, whether male, male, or female, male, whatever. Right. So that's the first thing. Number two, 
I really strongly suggest abstinence for those who can accept that because uh, I think that a lot of things, uh, HIV is just one. You also right. have to look at pregnancy, unintended pregnancy. Right. You also have to look at other STDs or sexually transmitted diseases, like right. syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. Right. Right. Um, and they're out there. I mean, we right. see, in fact, a recent CDC study showed that 25% of the girls who were tested in high school had a STD, a sexually transmitted 25% disease. 25% a quarter. of wow. the girls had some type of STD. Wow. And it ranged from the most common one being human papillomavirus, which is venereal warts, which is a... There are two types, one high risk and low risk. Okay. The high risk ones make the uh, females higher risk for cervical cancer. Okay. And so what we are ad- advocating there, and, and particularly, and just to get off the subject for one second here, right. is okay. that, that okay. uh, young, Afri- uh, young girls get vaccinated with Gardasil to make sure that they can prevent themselves from getting infected with the HPV, uh, the high risk HPV virus, and then okay. that will prevent the, the, the uh, formulation of the development of cer- cervical, cervical cancer, cancer. Right. later on in their lives. So, I but mean, there are a whole bunch of things. Help with HPV, my as much, no, no, not <coughs> really. Okay, right. so, but H, uh, the vaccine will prevent. Okay, the, uh, it can prevent the infection. Well, it, what the way vaccines work is that they build up your own immunity. So if you get, come in contact with it, okay. it will kill off the virus, so you don't become infected. Okay. so no doubt, pregnancy, and we know that um, we have a lot of teen pregnancies also. Yeah. Um, it's very high, and then we need to work and work with our youth to make sure that they understand that a teenager getting pregnant has a whole set of issues, not counting the educational issue, right. because then they have to go to school and they have to finish high school and go to college, we hope, and then to get a job and do those type of things. And, yeah. But also you have the child, and then a lot of times the child has to go with the parents and grandparents. And then you have the relationship, and more, more often that our teenagers, and they are not in meaningful relationships, so it does not culminate in a marriage. Right. And so then you have a child that you have the who does is not in a two family household per se. Right. And you have all kinds of issues that we would like to avoid if we can. Right. And the way is to educate and to support our teens and say you can have fun, you can do a whole lot of things. But abstinence is certainly recommended to uh, in for for people in that population age group. Now, for those who can't and don't and won't, uh, whatever reason, doesn't even matter. Refuse. Refuse, right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Make a ch- constant decision. We, then we suggest that you use def- definitely use condoms, some type of barrier contraceptive method. Okay. And there are a whole bunch of out there. I mean, the right. condoms are certain one. There's a vaginal condom, too. Okay. And there are all kinds of things that they can use that are there for you in case you do it. So okay. that you have an informed decision. Mm-hmm. So uh, our, whole, our whole point is, none, protect yourself. And right. two, don't infect someone else. And so, yes. what are you doing? In your, it's a personal choice. It's your personal decision. Right. And then we certainly don't want to impose on your freedom and your autonomy to make your own decision. Right. We just make some suggestions to you that to make you have a healthier and happier life. And that's, that's our purpose. Based upon information that's available for everybody. Exactly. Realizing exactly. that. And I, I guess that's the point for particularly a young person out there. Well, condoms are... Uh, not one hundred. Do not prevent HIV one hundred percent of the time, right. but you know a large percentage it, it right. can decrease it. A, it may not help well with HPV that can yeah. cause cervical cancer, right. but HIV it can. So uh, the consequences are huge no matter which way we look at it. Yeah, and and, and then you know the other thing about this is that <clears throat> we have so many other uh, contraceptive methods out there. Okay. Including, but not limited to, birth control pills. Okay. And, and so a lot of young adults, females particularly, are on birth control pills. So right. they protect 99.9% against pregnancy. You also have, you know, IUDs. Right. You have the... Um, the injections that you right, can get. Right. You used to have the little, the, okay. yeah, the Norplant and those type of things, and right. now you have NuvaRing and you have, I mean, there are a whole, and you have the patch, the the birth control pill patch that you can just stick a patch on, and it, it's, it can certainly stop and prevent pregnancy, unwanted and unplanned pregnancy. So, right. so we have done a fairly good job in in terms of having many contraceptive methods for preventing a pregnancy, even though. Uh, we do know that the number of teenagers and so forth having pregnancies and getting pregnant and unintended pregnancies is still very too high. 
way, it's way, way too, it still is way too high. Yeah, it's just totally out of hand. And but it doesn't protect against HIV. Zero. So you can get on birth control pills, you can use Nuvarine, you can use the patch. It does not protect against HIV. And so that's that's why we, I think that's one of the reasons why we're having such a, a large increase in the number of females with HIV infections is that they have contraceptive methods, whether it's uh, the patch or the pill or something, right. but they don't, it does not protect from HIV. And so this, this national health crisis, and particularly, you know, we find that New Orleans is, uh, ranks pretty far up there. I think Baton Rouge is number two and number three. And, and we're between seven and ten in terms of in the cases. So we have our work cut out before us. And that's why we need to scream. And that's why we need to say, look, make sure you protect yourself. Protect make sure you yourself. get tested. Get tested. Because you can't tell. And a lot of times, by the time you get symptoms, it's late in the disease process. Okay. okay. And so we don't want to wait until you get symptoms. Let's get tested early. That way we can hopefully prevent you from getting symptoms. And right. we can actually get, we can get your HIV viral load down so low okay. that it won't be detectable. Okay. Okay, that's key because the new medications that the are new out, medications it's not the same disease as it was 20 years ago, and you can take you know uh, not the 12 pill regimen and so forth. And they, yeah, they com they combine the pills together, right. and and hopefully we have a vaccine like we have with HPV at some point. Right. But it's very difficult. I mean, we've been working on a vaccine for years and years, and okay. I think we're getting closer, but. We're not there yet. So in the interim, okay. I think everyone needs to get tested. And, okay. then, and then once you get tested, we, we need to talk about treatment, too. A lot of people okay. who are HIV positive refuse to get treatment. Uh, they, I, and I'm not sure of all the reasons why, but if you're positive, please make sure you get into treatment because the, treatment. But the treatment works. And, and, it, and it's covered by insurance, or, or there's some program or whatever. Well, we do have eight. a program with the city, with okay. uh, Ryan White, uh, that we actually can cover the medication, the costs, and the treatment and the care, because okay. it's very important that you get into treatment. Because okay. now, I have to say, not all people, especially if you're early in the disease process, you may not need to have any treatment. Um, because it depends on viral load and all those type of things on okay. what they need to do. Right. So, uh, so, so that's why you need to be careful and you need to get tested so we can get you to the experts and then we can figure out what we need to do to help you have a healthier and a longer life. More than anything. And then we find this disease, you know, for years it was uh, uh, within the Caucasian community and the gay community, and, but this African-American Increasing yes. it, where, uh, and that's that's really one of the main points we want to make here today is right. that uh, it used to be a disease of males having sex with males primarily, and then injection drug use, mm -hmm. and then we we. Um, you know, we looked at blood and other forms of transmission, so now we can test blood, so very few people get it, you know, in the doctor's office or in blood and that kind of stuff. So that's just, right. that just not okay. the way right. it happens these days. Okay. And, but we have known over many years that it was a thing that males, with male having sex with male, men having okay. sex with men. And right. so, and then that the gay community, they all went and we started outreaching and trying to educate everyone to make sure right. that we can prevent okay. males from having, um, from getting infected. Right. But now the thing is, the African American females, more specifically, it's a heterosexual disease now becoming from females for male to female and not drug use and not, it's from men on the down low or however, they, right. they're infecting our females. And that's the message is that. Uh, you can't look at someone and tell they're HIV positive. Right. You can't look at a male and tell if they're on a DL, if they're having sex with men, or what they right. do. You right. know, I don't know. Right. I can't right. tell you. Right. So, so <laughs> no. what do I have to do? And right. they may not tell you. <laughs> And in fact, I, as we can go in our history, we know uh, we have had some very high-ranking people to, to swear on oath or whatever that they did not have sex or whatever with anyone. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so men don't historically tell you all the truth. They don't tell the whole, the whole. And so our women, we need to make sure that you understand that uh -huh. you have to protect yourself. Okay. And okay. even on the stack of Bibles, it is. The stack of Bibles, <laughs> not in front of the Supreme right. Court or whatever. <laughs> they may or may not tell you the truth <laughs> until the dress comes oath. out. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that, All right, no, I, I need to stop. You no, know? That's, good, that's, good, that's good. You know, but I think um, so many times, you know, we're looking at this thing of men having sex with men, particularly. But when we look at this huge jailed population, you know, uh, a third of the African-American men 
have been in jail from what we understand that and, and, and that's that that's almost lunatic when somebody looks at that you know how how can we have a civilized society when a third of any particular group right. you know has been to jail and so many times it's on crack cocaine or drug crimes right. and right. I always say it's hard to get people to stop eating sugar but you know yeah. we want to stop people from being crack. <laughs> it's a big problem and, and you know you're right well incarceration rates are the some of the highest in the world right and more particularly for african-american males and um, and I think that a lot of men do have sex in prison. Uh, okay. Whether consensual or not, I don't know. But the point is that we think that that happens and they get infected. And then they can certainly come out and infect other people. So there's a big push. In fact, we have... Uh, we have asked, I went before the legislative body myself, in fact, okay. to make it mandatory to get prisoners tested for HIV. Great. Uh, Great. It didn't pass, though. I mean, <laughs> well, how can it not pass? I mean, what's going on here? Who pays for it? How much it costs? But, <laughs> yeah. And not really. I mean, we push. And then we, in, uh, in fact, Representative Austin Badon, and we, okay. we put together a bill to go right. to try to get it to man mandate that the prisoners get tested. Please. And, as I said, it didn't pass, but we haven't given up on it because right. I, if you know, our whole goal, our whole point, my whole purpose and point is to protect people and save yeah, yeah. healthier, happier lives. Yeah. And so, we, if I can help, we're trying to help. We're not trying right. to hurt. We're trying to help. Right. I mean, the and compassion so is there. Right. So we need to test it. Right. And so that's why we recommend it to everyone that you get tested because it starts knowing your status. Right. And then, then right. you get your loved one, your significant other, your sexual right. partner, whoever that is, right. he or she, right. get them tested. Right. Okay. And then once you get tested, then at least you're starting from a baseline, you know where you are. Right. So that's why we went before the, the legislative body to try to get them to make mandatory testing, particularly up on release of prisoners, so that when they got into the community, right. if they were infected, we, we would know it, we could get them to treatment. And then more importantly, they wouldn't infect anyone else, which is the thing, you know, one of the differences between like breast cancer and HIV, mm -hmm. breast cancer, we don't know how you get it. Right. I, right. We don't know how you'd stop. I can't tell you how to stop a female from getting breast cancer. I can tell you who is at risk. If your mother, your sister, someone has breast cancer, you're okay. certainly at greater risk. Right. But I can't tell you what you need to do to stop. I can tell you have a low-fat diet, you need right. fiber, and all those type right. of things right. that can lower your prevalence and incidence of it. But, I, but with HIV, I can tell you how not to get infected. Right. Period. That's Period. it. Right. Totally preventable. Right. And then so and we can detect it if you are. Right. And even in breast cancer, we can detect it and the treatment and still those type of things. So right. I think we just need to get the word out to people because they are just not aware of what's really going out there. And thank you, like, for this program. This is so great. So we can get the word out and let all the listeners out there know that not only should you get tested, get That's everyone right. tested, get, get everybody tested. tested. Get tested. You get know, tested. Get your family, everybody, everybody. anyone right. at risk. Right. Make sure they get tested and know their status because there's no reason that another person has become infected in this country. Yeah. We can stop it. We can do it. We can stop it. People say, well, I don't have to get tested. I haven't been doing anything. But it, you can go back 10, 15 years, and if somebody, uh, uh, if they had had sex or whatever, you right. know, sex or drug use, uh, in the past 10 or 15 years, they could still be positive. That's right. Now, you know, you bring up an interesting point about the origin of this disease. Yeah, right. I've heard so many stories okay. about... I even heard that Hitler came up with, I mean, I heard it was in a lab that it was for genocide, that it was right. created, all that is baloney. It's, okay. And then really right. what happened, uh, the HIV virus started in chimpanzees. Okay. And then what happened in parts of Africa, they would kill the chim chimpanzees and they would eat them and they would get infected with their blood and then right. it, it spread from the chimpanzees to humans. Oh, okay. And, and so that's how it got started. So it wasn't and, a great conspiracy theory. Oh, no, 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 no. They said yeah, people saying so that you know, some test tube broke and spilled, and then it was somebody trying to genetically engineer a virus or something okay. to kill everybody. Okay, you know? okay, okay. Uh, th th right. That's not that's, that's not, not the case. By, that's not, not it. Not that's by not any stretch of imagination. You know? yeah. So, and that's have been proven that we have. And in fact, you know, we know that, and it's interesting because some champions, some pangees have become immune to it. So we're trying to see, see how, how is that happen? Right. Yeah, how it happened, and what we can learn from that, so we can translate it to uh, to to the human. Well, you've been working in this area for years. I mean, you know, prior to even with the city of New Orleans, I know you had traveled to Africa. I mean, you've always been involved in this this issue. Oh yes, uh, HIV has claimed more lives than World War One and World War Two put together. 
HIV has claimed many thousands, millions and millions of people have died from HIV, and more particularly even in Africa. Uh, in some areas, like in Zimbabwe, 36% of the women who were pregnant were HIV positive. 36%? 36%. Wow. And then there's a 40, well, in pregnancy, there's a 25% trans, vertical transmission rate, which means out of 100 pregnancy, 25 of the babies would be infected just from the pregnancy without treatment. And then there's a 15% transmission rate from breastfeeding, and in Africa, again, most of the women breastfeed because it's so expensive to yeah. feed with formula. Okay. And culturally, and yeah. I wish we could adopt yeah, that culture that, here too, here that get more women and more of our mothers to breastfeed because right. it's you can't buy milk as good as breast milk. It's always the right temperature. It has a, a immune uh, immunoglobulins in it to right. help fight in, infections yeah. and those type of things. The right, babies right. are healthy. Smaller. It helps with bonding. I mean, there's a whole bunch of Everything. things that we should. But anyway, I don't want to talk about That's that. Right. Right. He's a great doctor. <laughs> a great so I had to put that in there right. <laughs> about breastfeeding. But in Africa, it's a 15% increase in the transmission, so 40% right. of the kids uh, end up be, who are born to mothers who are HIV positive end up getting infected. Wow, wow. And so we had worked really hard to try to get them to get tested and start right. get treatment okay. and to help the, our brothers and sisters in Africa because it is, really, it is really a problem there. Wow. It is really. It's just uh, uh, unbelievable. What, what Doc, I, I, I just wish we had more and more time, but <laughs> yes. they we're running out. But hey, we have a couple of minutes. Take home message right to our viewers to key points for them. All right, the, the main thing is number one, uh, you can't look at someone and tell that they are HIV infected. You can't look at anyone and say that a male, for instance, is having sex with another male. I mean, you just can't tell. It's hard. And the men on the DL, and this is hard to tell. And even when you ask them, they may not tell you the truth. <laughs> right. So. We are suggesting that, A, you get tested and you get your sexual partners tested and so that you can know and be aware. And then if you're positive, get in the treatment. Because we know that it's being transmitted now heterosexually, uh, more particularly in the women, that it's being transmitted from men to women. And it's at an alarming rate. You can get tested and you can get treated and it doesn't have to be that way. We can prevent infections and we can treat it once you get infected so that you won't have to and can't and won't infect someone else. So please get tested. Everybody. Get Lottie, you. Dottie, everybody, let's get tested. Let's get tested. <laughs> right. and, and the thing of it is, and for those, and we'll put this in, it's got to be compassion for people who have the disease. Stigmas against, hey, you know, I might catch the disease if I hug them or right. something like that. We, we, we have to eliminate that type of thing. Yeah, we got to. And then, you know, it's, it's a, you said, it's, it's the stigma and the, the whole thing about getting tested and that kind of thing. I think we just need to get rid of it and then get tested and start off and then be compassionate. And in the relationships, it's all in terms of relationship. And then I think that's the, thing, the beauty in this is the, the, the relationship. Sounds good. Hey, this is Chris Sylvain your host with Health Issues 2010. We're so excited again to have Dr. Kevin Stevens. We thank you for being able to share with us. Hey, and please do, please do, get tested. Hey, stay safe. Thank you, Health Issues 2010.